Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative. Speaking of me, Island of a Virgin River on Netflix. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. It's it's exciting. I mean, the reception for season three has just been insane, but it's been a global. I mean, does it still blow your mind how global because of Netflix, obviously, like the, the reception has just been like from so many countries. Like, it's amazing to see the global reception of Virgin yeah. River. Yeah. I mean, I've I've even gotten to see some of the dubbed scenes. Yep. I just say. I almost like myself more dubbed. Like, <laughs> like I think you, I think you should be interviewing the people who do the dubbing because that's impressive work, man. Like, you want to hear something that. very so something very interesting about that? So Ragnarok from Norway on Netflix, uh, most of the cast speak uh, pe- perfect English. They did their own dub in English. No. Isn't that crazy? I love that. That's so cool. I've heard I don't know if it's everyone, dub. but I know, for example, like Jonas, who plays um, Lauritz, Loki, he for, did his own dub. So, like, when you see it in English, it's like him speaking. <laughs> that is so weird and so cool. I love that. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, no, the global reception has been uh, just so impressive. And, like, the number of uh, messages I get on, on the social medias from, like, everywhere, like, corners of the world, I'm like, wait, you guys get... Netflix too, and you watch this like it's very cool. It's really touching. It's amazing. I mean, I find it really the thing that I love the most about Virgin River. I mean, it's kind of like just kind of the irony of like Virgin River about a small town, but there's <laughs> nothing small about what's happening with the characters at all, right? Nothing small. <laughs> they like just they just take all the biggest life things and events that can happen to anybody, and they just pack it into that small town. But you know, I think it's cool because. You know, there are life events that um, and things that are happening to people, whether or not you're in a big city or small town. But yeah, they really know how to pack it in on that show. It's unbelievable. A big, a big season for your character, Bree. A big season for Brady as well. Um, was that something like obviously you have you get the scripts and you know about the arcs and everything. But did you both know that you were going to have like were you prepared for like the big seasons that your characters were going to have? I was only, uh, there's only so much that can prepare you, <laughs> especially if you've seen season and you have like, you know, Bree's story arc is really epic. And so I knew, but then, you know, you get the scripts only sort of one, one episode ahead of time. Um, and so, you know, a lot of it's like sort of experiencing it in real time almost um, as an actor. And yeah, like, in a way, I'm glad I wasn't fully prepared for it because it sort of left some room for some spontaneity and some discovery between certainly me and Ben, who plays Brady, and um, and then you know my my relationship, my character's relationship with all, you know Jack, her brother, and, and yeah. that blossoming friendship with Mel. So I knew I knew I had an idea, but you don't really know until you get the scripts and then you're there with the people. The complexity of the characters is just insane. And the thing is, you know, there's so many amazing characters. Obviously, like every show, right? There's the lead characters, the recurring and everything. But there just seems to be so many, like, like from Ricky, like so many just like so many characters that you're like invested in on Virgin <laughs> River. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I love that. Look, I watched the show before I was ever on it. And so I felt that as a viewer. I was very yeah. invested in like Ricky's story and um and everyone else. And and I think the writer Sue Tenney does such a beautiful job at filling out the ensemble um cast and their storylines. Did we because that's the one thing about a small town is like everybody knows about each other and you do care. You care about, you know, Connie and um, Preacher and, you know, all these characters that otherwise in most storylines would be more sidelined, but she's really good at giving nod to every character's journey. Oh, 100%. There is so much going on in the show that we talked about. I mean, in terms of takeaways, what you're hoping they get out of it, maybe maybe narrow it down to this season specifically, but when they watch season three, Virgin River on Netflix, takeaway-wise, what are you hoping they get out of it, Zibby? PD Beats, you're coming in hard with the question. <laughs> That's a very hard question. I mean, 
you know, I it could hope, be a bunch of things. Okay, I'll start. I'll, I'll go with my storyline because that's the one I was most interwoven with. Obviously, of course. Um, you know, I think that my character uh, has a lot of heavy components to her story, um, dealing with her rape and her miscarriage. And one aspect I'm really proud of is that the writers didn't make Brie this really obvious, recognizable victim of, of sexual abuse. Yes. She was imperfect and she had a sexuality and she was in many ways like the um, the more aggressive one between her and Brady. Yep. And so, you know, people watching who have an idea about what rape is and what that does to somebody i think it's nice to be able to capture some of more of that gray area where it's somebody that she had been seeing and you know she's trying she's working really hard all season to like take back control over her body and her feelings and i think that's cool to see i'm proud of that so i hope there's some interesting takeaway for the viewer there you know and i think a lot i think you know if you go if you see you know the, like a lot of the you know fans I've brought that up, the storyline of Brie, and I've brought a lot of that up too. So yeah. um, that does it doesn't go unnoticed because like what you just brought up, I've seen like people talk about all the time. Totally, and some people, you know, very understandably, innocently haven't understood like how can she be? It doesn't seem like she's that traumatized, and actually, PTSD works its way through people in so many different um, manifestations, and so I think it's cool to see that and. Look, like she's still capable of having a romance that ends up being like fairly steamy. With yes. <laughs> and um, I I think that's cool. I had a lot of fun. Ben's great to work with too. Oh, for sure. Uh, an interesting segue I thought of because, you know, Virgin River, it, it, like, because I find it, you, you were talking about how, you know, there's moments, especially with characters that like really hit hard and you're watching it and it's like, wow. And, yeah. you know, Virgin River is not a sitcom. It's a show that has some kind of charming moments in it, right? And sometimes yeah. you can get a little chuckle, but it's not a sitcom. But what I've noticed, and I'm just, this is just kind of a general question for you as being kind of a storyteller and an actor, Zibi. I mean, have you noticed the transformation of the sitcom where it's not necessarily... Like, it's not just kind of slapstick goofy. Like, there's some things in sitcoms that, like, hit you. Yes. Like a ton of bricks. Yes, I agree. And I personally love that. Look, I think that we as an audience appreciate things that are relatable. And so just, like, a laugh a minute doesn't fly as much anymore. No. And frankly, I think humor works when it's rooted in something that's really true. Yes. And, and you appreciate that humor even more when, like, when the writer's just broken your heart and then they drop in a little funny, you're like, ah, I needed that life vest of humor. Um, I think it's a really effective way to do humor. So I notice the same thing, and I think it's great. You know? Absolutely. Getting yeah. also back to like kind of the global, like the access, like globally of shows like Virgin River. I mean, do you think like that, that kind of, everyone talks about how we're the golden age of television just because of the content, the quality coming out. And I hundred percent agree with it, but do you kind of agree with me in, in a sense that like the global and access component of it kind of like is one of the main reasons why I think we're in the global, uh, like the global age of television, like the golden age. Like I feel like the global aspect of it is just trumps like the amazing. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to discredit the amazing storytelling, but it's just it just blows my mind. It's amazing. I I think you're totally right. I love that observation. I haven't thought a lot about it, but as you're saying it, I'm like, yes. You know, and that accessibility. Look, the one thing that really unifies all of us is like the human experience. And yeah. the most effective way to capture that is in storytelling, where it's not directly about you or directly about me, but we see ourselves in it. And there therein lies sort of like that global pull, because at the end of the day, we're all made of the same stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Opinions and stories and circumstances aside, you know, we can find ourselves inside of almost any story. And so the fact that like, you know, Netflix is available in every single country that you didn't even know existed. Yep. Um, you know, I think there's a real unifying component there and it's cool. I love being a part of that. It's, it's, it's and the resurfacing of content too, because of social media. Yeah. I mean, hey, Zibi, Ant Farm. <laughs> Why did you do that to me? Oh my god! Well, Ant no, because Farm. I interviewed. No, because I. There's a reason why I brought that up because I no. brought, I interviewed. Um, um, I I did. Um, Aiden no. Minx. I interviewed Aiden Minx from from Cobra Kai, and 
there was a scene at the like like that that always comes up on TikTok at like the Chinese restaurant, and your character is there, and it just always comes up. No, but it's it's a good, it's an important talking point. They're resurfacing. Like there's no shelf life. There's no shelf life, which is cool. And by the way, I'm very proud of Ant Farm. That was Ant Farm, so... Madame, Madame Goo Goo, right? I think it was. You were like an artist. <laughs> yes, like she was a spoofing Lady Gaga, but like a very low grade version. And um, no, it's so fun. I mean, speaking of sitcoms, I love that uh, genre a lot because yeah. it's sort of like doing a play on crack, part of the expression, but you know, you still get like a live audience. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, they just, they, they even that show, which was like for tweens, you know, yeah. like Disney still dealt with some heartfelt matters. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, I still get shout outs for Madam Goo Goo. Uh, no, but it's just like, because, you know, there was a time where, you know, <laughs> Those shows were very good for like passive watching, like when you're doing homework or you're doing something, they're just kind of in the background. <laughs> so, like, oh, man. <laughs> I know. And you know, that show too, like, because it would be on the background, like the parents would put it on for their kids, but then parents would like weirdly get invested because the writing was quite clever. And so mm. I still get like the odd email from a full adult, full on adult who's like, yo, I miss Ant Farm. My kids have outgrown it, but I miss <laughs> it. And I'm just like, great. But um, getting back to Virgin River very quickly, too, I find it interesting because, you know, we've already talked about how unbelievable the writing and the character growth and de development is. And absolutely. And you're obviously you're a storyteller and you're acting in this show. You're obviously focusing on acting. But do scripts and kind of, you know, the direction like the directors have, like when you look at like what they do with shows like Virgin River, does it maybe inspire you to like want to go behind the camera a little bit more and write your own stuff and direct? Cause I'm, like, does that happen as well? Because it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's a great question. And it does, it has happened. I wasn't sure if it ever would. And then just in the last couple of years, I think, you know, spending the, the last several years have been so great career wise. And so I've yeah. had a, the good fortune of being able to be in front of the camera. And there's a lot of technical that goes into that. Um, it's not just long form theater like I grew up doing. And so that technical piece has really intrigued me because so much of the technical goes into telling the story well. And so I want to yeah. learn about that naturally. Um, and just this last summer, I was able to shadow a director on the last film I did on my days off. And it is a whole art form unto itself. And I am profoundly curious about it. There's so much to learn. But of course, I'm really drawn to that because everything that goes into making what the audience sees um, it's so detailed and intricate and involved in ways that even I didn't realize until halfway through my acting career, you know, when I, when I actually could relax and not be so nervous and pay attention to like what was happening on the other side of camera. hundred percent. Zibby, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turnative. I really enjoyed chatting with you. Having me, likewise. You're the greatest. I've been, I've been watching your interviews. You're a great interviewer. So that really you. means a lot. Thank you very much for saying that. Yeah. That's. Yeah. It's just I just want to have fun conversations. Like, can we just like <laughs> just have fun, right? Like, yes, that's the motto. And I it's agree. exciting because you know season three of Virgin River has like leaves us with a lot of questions, but it leaves us wanting more. And we wanted to know, we, we want more, like we want to talk more about it. So it's exciting. Cause I, I always get that question when I start my show, like I'll be like, welcome to pop turn. And everyone's like, you have such good energy. And I'm like, yeah, because it's exciting. <laughs> like yeah, we're talking about your show. Like, it's the best to be met with that energy. Like I could talk to you for five more hours. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold you up, but I mean, <laughs> you really, you're so fun to chat with. And I think it's a rare, awesome quality. So no wonder you're so I really, I really appreciate that. So season three, well, all, all seasons of Virgin River, they could watch on Netflix now. Absolutely. Um, and where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? I'm on inst I'm on the Instagram as Zibby Lou, which is a nickname. So it's Zibby with L O O. And so yeah, you can find me there. I'm there. You know. I'm Amazing. Happy. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, this yeah. has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Zibby Allen and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.